Hey everyone, Dr. Richard Lai here with Study Acupuncture with me. Now this episode is on improving eyesight using both distal points and proximal points. So we're going to go into all that and more right after we hear a quick word from our sponsor. All right, and we're back. So today's topic is on acupuncture points that are going to help you improve eyesight in your patients. Now this topic actually comes from a request made by a user named FunkyBell22. Now FunkyBell22 responded on a Q&A on Spotify. FunkyBell said, in terms of TCM, how does one improve eyesight, particularly night vision? So the short answer to this, and the quickest win to this, is just to use gallbladder 37. So gallbladder 37 is the low point of the gallbladder channel, which means that it's a point that connects the interiorly and exteriorly related channel of the gallbladder and the liver. Now with the liver, we know that the liver organ opens into the eyes. Now what that means is that the eye is the sense organ that's connected to the liver. And specifically what this means for us from a clinical sense is that if the liver is healthy, meaning if liver blood is healthy, then that liver blood is going to be able to nourish the eyes and is going to be able to moisten them. That way we can see very clearly. On the other hand, if liver blood is deficient, then there could be issues like dry eyes, night vision issues, blurry vision, floaters, Maybe some patients even have color blindness. Now, although I said gallbladder 37 right off the bat, if you've been following me for a while, you know me. I never like to give blanket statements for prescriptions because for, for me, in my opinion, our patients, us, we're all people. And our situations, they can change from day to day. Our bodies change from day to day. And what may work for you may not work for me. What may work for them may not work for them. And even actually what worked one day may not work the very next day. Let me tell you about my most recent patient, for example. So she came in and she was complaining of chest tightness, hypochondrial pain, difficulty breathing, tiredness, feels like her throat is closing up. So I started the acupuncture points using extraordinary meridians, thinking that that would benefit her. And right off the bat, I felt like maybe this would be too strong of a treatment for her, but I still pushed through anyway. And as she was laying on the table, she became more and more sort of short of breath. She was breathing, even her voice was quivering when she was talking. And I let it sit like that for a couple minutes, felt like eternity. But then I thought, I'm gonna change the prescription. I'm gonna take out all the needles now and I'm gonna completely turn it around to just light tonification points. So I went with spleen three, kidney three, liver three, lung nine. Just those four points, that's it. And that completely changed the treatment. She started to breathe more calmly. She said she started to warm up again. Her voice wasn't quivering. So what works one day may not work the next day. Even what worked in the beginning of a treatment may not work at the end of a treatment. So never be afraid to change the treatment based on the presentation of the patient. Now, that being said, with gallbladder 37, that's the first point that comes to mind in terms of eye problems because it's one of the primary distal points that you can use to brighten the eyes. Because when someone comes into your clinic with an eye-related issue, then you think gallbladder 37 for the most part. And that's because, again, it's the low point of the liver, which means that it connects with the liver. And we know also that the liver opens into the eyes. And we said before, liver blood is responsible for nourishing and moistening the eyes. So if liver blood is healthy, then our vision will also be healthy. So although we can use gallbladder 37, when a patient comes in with issues with their eye, or if they say, I have issues seeing at night, we have to ask more questions of this patient. For example, are your eyes dry? Do you have blurry vision? Do you have floaters? These all could be signs of liver blood deficiency. We need to ask them too. Are your eyes red? Are they dry? Are they swollen? Are they bloodshot? Because those are signs of liver fire. We could look at their eyes and see if there's gunk coming out of their eyes. Or we can ask them, do you have a lot of gunk when you wake up? Do you have a lot of gunk throughout the day? We call this in TCM, gritty eyes. So are your eyes gritty? Now, grittiness could be related to liver yin deficiency, or it could also be related to liver blood deficiency. We can also ask them, has your eye been fidgeting? Meaning, have they been moving back and forth? With this one, any involuntary movement in the body Body is usually related to wind. So could it be liver wind? Or we can ask our patient, or we can find out maybe their eyesight has been declining with age. So this then could be something kidney related. So that's why it's really important to do a full comprehensive evaluation. And if you're not an acupuncturist and you're not an acupuncturist student and you're listening to this podcast, it's really important for you to go to your acupuncturist and get a thorough evaluation to help figure this out. Because the root changes the point prescription. If, for example, the root is liver blood deficiency, then we would want to use a treatment that can nourish the liver and nourish the blood. But on the other hand, if the issue is liver fire, then we would want to clear the liver 
liver and we want to drain that fire. So for the first one, if it's liver blood deficiency, then we would use points like liver 3 or liver 8, which both of these can nourish liver and nourish liver blood. But with liver fire, we would want to incorporate points like liver 2 because number one, liver 2 is the yin spring point of the liver channel. And with yin spring points, they have an effect on febrile conditions or fire related things. And if you've been following me for a while, you might remember one of my earlier videos where I talked about that mnemonic for the antique points, which from Jingwell to Hasi is my friends are all idiots. So the second word is F. So F is for fire. So the second one is the ying spring point. So F for fire for febrile conditions. So ying spring point liver two can treat therefore liver fire. Okay, so for distal points, those are the most common ones. So first we talked about gallbladder 37. So we should talk about where gallbladder 37 is located. So gallbladder 37 is located on the lateral side of your lower leg. Now it's five soon superior to the lateral malleolus. Now how do you find five soon from the lateral malleolus? From the lateral malleolus to your popliteal crease is 12 soon. That means halfway is six soon. So it's just one soon down from that halfway point. So gallbladder 37 is located on the lateral side of your lower leg, and it's located five soon superior to the tip of your lateral malleolus. So if you take your lower leg and you draw a line from your lateral malleolus to your popliteal crease, the length of that line is 12 soon. Now half of that length is six soon. So gallbladder 37 is five soon superior to the lateral malleolus. So it's just one soon down from the halfway point. Now the other two distal points that we talked about is liver two, liver three, and liver eight. Now we can use liver two in the case of excess issues, and then we can use liver eight or liver three in cases of deficiency. Liver two again is your ying spring point. It's located on the top of your foot, the dorsum of your foot. It's between your first and second toe. It's about half a soon proximal from that proximal web space. And then liver three is located between your first and second metatarsals, so it's a little more up on your foot. So you basically slide your finger up between your first two toes, and your finger is going to hit this little divot, and that's where liver three is. And then lastly, we have liver eight. So liver eight is the hussy point of the liver channel. One of the functions of liver eight is that it can nourish blood, so we can use it in cases of deficiency. Now this point is located one soon anterior to kidney 10. Now kidney 10 is an easy point to find because it's located right in between the tendons of your semimembranosus and semitendinosus. Now I can make a separate video on these muscles and the acupuncture points in this area. Just leave a comment below if you'd like to see a video on that. So kidney 10 is located in between those two tendons, the semimembranosus and semitendinosus. Now liver 8 is just located one soon anterior to that. All right, so those are the distal points for the eye-related issues. Now let's talk about the local points. Now with the local points, we have this picture here. Here we have all the local points around the eye. Now this eye sort of looks familiar, right? This is actually a vector drawing of me. So it's kind of interesting to look at. So here are all the local points. So if we start from the inner campus, we have UB1. So UB1 is located just medial and slightly superior to the inner campus. And Deadman says that it's actually 0.1 soon medial and superior to that inner campus. Now this is the first point of the urinary bladder channel. The name of this point is Jing Ming. So Jing Ming means eye brightness. And one of the functions of this point is therefore that it brightens the eye. So obviously then you can use it for most eye related issues, like for example, night vision issues, blurry vision, or painful eyes. Next we have UB2. So UB2 is superior to UB1 and is located in the depression close to the medial end of the eyebrow. Now UB2 as a local point can also brighten the eyes. So it can also treat eye related issues. So both UB1 and UB2 can treat eye related issues. UB1 and UB2 can also treat wind issues or treat any excess things that are going into the eye. All right, so now next we have an extra point which is called Yu Yao or Yu Yao, which means fish waste in Chinese. So this point is located right in the middle of the eyebrow. With this one, you gotta ask your patient to look straight ahead. So that way you can find this point directly above the pupil in the middle of the eyebrow. Now this point can benefit the eyes. This point can also treat headaches that are located behind the eyes. This point, because of where it is, it can also treat issues with the eyelids. Like for example, if the eyelids are twitching or if they're drooping, or it can also treat any eye related issues like the blurry vision, the issues with night vision or pain in the eyes. All right, next going around the local points, we have Sanjiao 23. 
Now, Sancho 23 is located on the lateral end of the eyebrow. It's another local point that can benefit the eyes. It can brighten the eyes. So you can also use this point to treat all those issues that we've been talking about so far. Okay, next we have gallbladder one. Now, gallbladder one is located 0.5 soon lateral to the outer canthus. Now you can feel this one right on the edge of your orbital foramen. Now that orbital foramen is the socket that's around your eye. In fact, with all these points, you'll notice that we're basically going around the rim of the eye socket. So gallbladder one is a local point, 0.1 soon lateral to the outer canthus. And it can also be used to treat issues related to the eye. Now with gallbladder one, it's a yin-yang pair with the liver. And before we already talked about how the liver opens into the eyes, so using gallbladder 1 as a local point in connection with that distal point we talked about before, gallbladder 37, that can be a really strong prescription for eye-related issues. Next, we have an acupuncture point called Chu Ho. Chu Ho is an extra point. It's also located on the border of the orbital foramen. This one's located on the inferior aspect of the orbital foramen. And Deadman says that it's at the junction of the lateral one quarter and medial three quarters of the infraorbital foramen. So basically for this one, you find the rim of the orbital foramen, which is right below the middle of your eye, and then you just sort of slide your finger laterally, just a little bit, and you'll find this divot there. So that's exactly where Chu Ho is. If you break this area up into quarters, it's on the lateral one quarter and medial three quarters. That's what Deadman's referring to. Now this is an extra point that has an action to benefit the eyes. All right, and now lastly, but not leastly, we have two other local points which can benefit the eyes, and those two points are stomach one and stomach two. Now, stomach one is located right below the pupil on that infraorbital ridge. And then stomach two is located below stomach one. It's located in this thing known as the infraorbital foramen. So there's this little hole that you'll feel when you slide your fingers downward from stomach one. That's where stomach two is. It's called the infraorbital foramen. Now, both of these points can be used as local points that can benefit the eyes. So whether the eye is affected by heat, by dryness, by pain, by grittiness, you can use these local points to treat those eye-related issues. And if you're someone who isn't an acupuncturist or an acupuncture student and you're watching this video, you can use acupressure on any of the points that we talked about. So you can use your knuckle, you can use your clean fingertip to just apply pressure to these areas to activate their benefit. So if you're having eye strain issues, night vision issues, dry eyes, you can use the points that we talked about to activate their function to benefit the eyes. But with that, I highly recommend that you see your primary care physician, your optometrist, and your acupuncturist for a full workup for any of the symptoms that you're having related to your eyes. Because this video is only for educational purposes only, and this video should not be used in replacement of medical treatment or medical evaluation. And with that being said, that does it for this episode. So I hope you found tremendous value out of this episode. If you did, I hope you interact with this episode. So if you're watching on YouTube or you're listening on podcast, leave a comment below, hit the like button, and share this episode with a friend who you think would also benefit from listening. And don't forget about my email list. By subscribing to my email list, you get study guides sent to your email with each theory-based episode. So please go to www.studyaccuwithme.com to sign up today. All right, everyone. Until next time, God bless and happy studying.